Okay, back to business, guys. So everyone give, uh, give Scott a virtual uh, slap for leaving his game on and uh, we'll get started again. So sorry about that. Um, okay, so we are going to discuss the very first seminar is calculating a, uh, calculating a calorie starting point. Okay, so a big, big thing that I've started to feel very recently with nutrition and with fitness really is that the more we can understand the things that we're applying the more likely we are to stick to them, okay? So I've actually ended this, this seminar with a, a quote, which is quite a classic quote, which is, you know, if you give a man a fish, he can feed himself for a day. If you teach him how to fish, you know, he can feed himself for the rest of his life. And that's very, very much where we're gonna be going through without this entire program, okay? So everyone's looking for short approaches. Everyone's looking for this cookie cutter, miracle plan that's gonna, you know solve all their problems or their fat loss problems their muscle gain problems but over and over again i'm saying this to clients you know if you're going to somebody and getting a set plan or following a set plan are you realistically going to follow that plan for the rest of your life and the answer is no okay so that means that we need to understand the plan we need to understand calories we need to understand macros we need to understand how to measure our progress and, and everything else that we're going to go through across the next 12 weeks okay there's an absolute metric shit ton of information that's going to be coming your way and the best thing is that you are going to learn how to apply this okay so my goal by the end of this seminar is that you guys know more than most of the online coaches out there you know most of the pts most of the nutritionists and most of all that is something that you can then teach you know i know there's so many of us here that have got kids you know what's better than you know down the line to be able to to teach them about nutrition about them about training about the, th the things they need to know to progress okay so we are going to start with calculating a calorie point so can you, I'm just gonna, going to share my screen. Oops. So, share screen. So, can you guys, can, uh, Chris, Pete, I've got your camera on. Can you just give me a wave? Can you guys all see, da Danielle, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, cool, okay. Yeah, keep your mics off, guys, if you can. So, okay, so calculating a calorie starting point. Seems really simple, but we're gonna go through it point by point. Keep note of any questions you've got, and then I can go through them at the end, okay? So, we need to think of calories as a pyramid of importance, okay? So at the base are calories, which are the most important. The second tier is our macronutrient amounts. We're gonna be coming on to these in more details tomorrow. But our macronutrients are protein, carbs, and fats. There's actually four. The fourth one is alcohol, which we will come on to in a further seminar. And the third tier is micronutrients. So micronutrients are things like vitamins, minerals, hydration, fiber, everything else. The final tier of the pyramid is the more critical stuff in a kind of higher level bodybuilding and, and athletic kind of fraternity. So meal frequency and nutrient timing for muscle growth, performance and fat loss. But first of all, you'll all know in regards to anything, and this is another massive, massive area where people go wrong, is we've got to get the base and the foundation of what we're doing right first okay so the sad thing is in you know in, in today's society there's a lot of people writing meal plans there's a lot of people giving nutrition advice that aren't qualified and 99 out of 100 in fact you guys can try this but 99 out of 100 people giving nutrition advice you know if you say to them so what actually is a calorie you see how many of them can actually answer okay so the base of the pyramid and the starting point of calories, the points we need to go through is that most of us are pretty unsure and we're pretty clueless as to what we can, what we should consume from an outset. Okay. So 
Most of us then, we also underestimate. This is the biggest thing in the world. Everything gets missed out, okay? So if I had to pick out one single reason why, why people fail in their fat loss goals, it would ultimately be down to this first seminar and it would be because they either underestimate the amount of calories they consume or they really, really poorly account their food. This means they start having teaspoons of peanut butter and not weighing it. A teaspoon could be anywhere between 15 and 30 grams. It means they start having a little bit of the kids' food. It means they forget about the mayonnaise that they put on their salad. You know, these are the, oh. the two biggest things. Either we just haven't got a clue, uh, which we're going to come on to, or we do have a clue, but we massively underestimate and we're not honest about it, okay? So in regards to calculating the calorie starting point, we could start with a very simple equation and you'd have seen the equation in my book and you'll see the equation on the line uh, online. I can't even remember the exact name of it. Harris Benedict, I think it is, but we just don't need to overcomplicate it. Okay. At the end, I'm going to post a link into the, the chat of um, zoom and it's a BMR calculator, pure and simple. You put your age in, you put your height in, you put your weight in, and it will calculate your BMR, okay? So your BMR is <coughs> what's called your basal metabolic rate, okay? So your basal metabolic rate is the amount of energy that your body would consume and need in what's called a neutrally temperate environment, okay? So if you want me to turn that into uh, layman's terms basically if you were just really really lazy and all you did was lay on the couch all day and do absolutely sweet fa okay from then the app will then calculate what will be your maintenance figure okay so this is based on your daily activity levels this is based on what you do for a job how much you train and how active you are okay so again there's loads of really complicated online calculators when we can go from sedentary at 1.2 to more active at 1.4 just use the calculator okay some things you just don't need to question technology has moved on way 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 past since when these things were created so you know make it easy for yourself use the calculator okay so some of you in here are clients that have been for with me for a long time okay so you are going to work out your calorie amount and then you may check back on your diet plan and say well hang on Lee this is telling me that I should be on 2,800 calories for maintenance um, and you started on started me on 1,900 so th this can't be wrong okay that's where you would be wrong, okay? So the difference between having a coach and having a scientific equation is that when you fill out a questionnaire, when you work with me, I understand that your body has had 39 years. My body has, yours might not have done. Um, my body's had 39 years of metabolic adaptation, okay? That comes from periods of undereating, periods of overeating, periods of training, you know, 10 times a week, periods of not training at all, periods of hammering alcohol, you know, the, the, we've constantly adapted the body over time, okay? So we have to remember, if you're creating this yourself, that amount of calories is just a starting point, okay? So don't worry if it doesn't match what's on your plan. It's a point where we work from, and there's a lot of other psychological factors as well, and physiological factors. So if, for instance, and Danielle, I'm only using you because your camera is the one that's on my screen for some reason. Um, you know, if Danielle had come to me as a client and science said that should be, she should be on 2,600 calories, but when she kept a food diary and put her food into my fitness pal, she'd actually only been eating 1,200 for the last six months, it wouldn't make any sense to go straight to 2,600, okay? So sometimes we need to apply what science says, but then we also need to relate it to our own situation. So, you know, but for, you know, nine out of 10 people, the BMR will create a very, very good starting point for the maintenance 
of calories, okay? So moving on, that's why we then need an, a, a process of monitoring and also a reactive approach to, to nutrition, okay? So this is why I'm against these set plans because I can write you the perfect nutrition plan based on what your form says and what nutrition says and what, and what science says. So, but then what happens if you dramatically lose weight after one week? What happens if you, you gain weight after, after one week? What happens if nothing happens? You know, we have to understand that it's all relative to the individual and that's why I want to dig deep and I want you to understand exactly how to manage your nutrition because once you do, I promise you, it's the, it's the coolest thing in the world, okay? I can manipulate my weight up and down however I want. I mean, literally, like, uh, you know, always in control on the advert. I'm completely in control of it. Now, sometimes psychologically I'm not because I can't keep my feet out of the fridge and I keep eating cheese or I don't go for a run for three days or, you know, any number of other reasons. But overall, if I was being good, so to speak, I'm in complete control of fluctuating my weight up and down. And now after years and trial and error, I've kind of found that happy place where, you know, I'm not too lean, but I could be photo shoot ready in four weeks if I wanted to be. And I've said that time and time again, okay? So I kind of sit in a nice, healthy maintenance zone and I'm in a position where I can drop the hammer when I want to, okay? So I'm just going to come on to the second part, okay? So, the uh, the story time and I always want to relate so all we're looking for from you guys now is just to get that calorie number that's all I want you to know for tomorrow okay use the BMR calculator I'm going to drop into the chat at the end and calculate what your BMR is and have it ready for tomorrow that's it nothing else needs doing at this point okay so some of you some of you will know I often use the fictitious character of Sharon to uh, describe some circumstances. We're going to be absolutely screwed if um, a client ever actually joins that's called Sharon. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll roll with it. OK, so I'm going to use kind of real life stories to try and make nutrition to make sense to you. OK, so <clears throat> this is the classic thing. And I'm sure you've heard it a million times or even said it yourself. Sharon says is the reason I can't lose weight that I'm not eating enough food. Now, science would say that's completely impossible, okay? So because I'm so into business, I always relate things back to business. So a business sense of that would be saying, is the reason there's so much money in my bank account that I don't go to work and earn any? Well, no, Sharon, that's a load of shit. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's completely wrong. But... Sharon has got some madness in what she's saying. And this is leading back to the pyramid and why we need to lay the foundation of a healthy metabolism, okay? So Sharon's got a, a twin sister, okay? So if they both come to me and they both start on, sorry, Sharon starts on 2,200 calories and Sharon's sister, what should we call her? Tracy. Tracy starts on 1200 calories. Okay. Both of their BMRs are in the region of 1800. Tracy will lose weight dramatically. Okay. And she will downregulate her metabolism because it's way too low. The body is not built to get shredded and look awesome in a pair of Bermuda shorts budgie smugglers or bikinis okay the body's built for survival so if you're eating Sharon's eating way too way too little calories the body will very quickly adapt okay down to only burning that amount of calories and this is why you need to get the shortcut cookie cuts approach out of your head so Sharon could actually be 21 stone okay she could go on to 1200 calories You'll have seen all the Sharons with their um, multi-level marketing approaches, Herbal Life, Juice Plus, Cloud9, Aloe Vera, all the other crap that you see online. And they're posting all over their social media. Uh, just lost seven pounds in my first week. Just lost 14 pounds in my second week. They're trying to get everyone else to do it with miracle pills and shakes. And then you never hear from them after two weeks, okay? 
And the reason why you never hear from them is because they never lost any weight after the first two weeks because it was only weight they lost. So even someone who, who, who's really, you know, 300 pounds plus, if they only have 1200 calories, the body will downregulate to only burn in that amount. So is the reason I can't lose weight that I'm not eating enough food? In a way, yes, not in a scientific way, but because you only ate 1200 calories, Sharon, your body's only burning that amount of calories because you conditioned it to. That's going back to the metabolic adaptation, okay? So think of it the other way. We don't want the body to lose weight or fat on as little food as possible, but it's very, very easy to see why people think that because everybody thinks less food more exercise equals better faster results less food more exercise doesn't equal better faster results it equals a battered metabolism that the body will down regulate to and then you'll be stuck up at 300 pounds and you can't eat more than 12 you're eating 1200 calories and you can't lose weight that's what's happened with sharon and that's why she's saying that comment okay so we we'll also see the person that this comes on to the next line, which is I hate my sister, she eats what she wants and she never gains weight, okay? So the reason why that happens to her is one, because she probably trains very, very hard. And it's also because she consistently does eat what she wants, which is probably brings her in at two to two and a half thousand calories per day. So what we need to start to think of is to lose body fat, we need to work the metabolism and not crash it, okay? So if you want a steam train to go faster, you put more coal in. If you want a fire to burn more, you put more wood in. If you want a body to burn more or a metabolism, you put more food in, okay? The body will then begin to trust you. And once we've laid that healthy metabolic foundation, as the twin would have done, okay? So the twin's on 2,200 calories and she started losing about half a pound of body fat per week. The other twin is on 1,200 calories. She lost 14 pounds for the first two weeks and now she's stuck at a plateau. Well, she can't eat any less than that because she'll starve and just binge and cheat all the time. So that's the point we need to avoid and the point we need to be at is where we're dropping weight on as much food as possible, okay? And that comes from consistently eating, consistently tracking, and consistently training, okay? So that's what we're going to be working on, and that's what we're going to implement. Now, two other things that I just wanted to put in, okay? And these are going to come up week after week after week. Okay, so how much does your cupboard weigh? Now, this may seem like a strange thing to put, but again, this is what happens when you will have all done it as well. I've done it. The same person, Sharon, starts that plan and she's lost 14 pounds of weight in the first two weeks. Okay. Well, that's all it is. It's weight. Okay. So that's exactly the same as going downstairs and taking all your tins out of the kitchen cupboard. Okay. That cupboard weighs a lot more. It doesn't look any different. And as soon as you put the tins back in, it's going to weigh exactly the same. That's what these plans are doing, and that's where you're going wrong. Because all you're doing is emptying all the glycogen stores and all the water stores from the body. The body will weigh a lot less. As soon as you eat a decent carb meal, it's going to weigh exactly the same. Okay, It's a completely pointless process. We need to remember, and again, whilst weight is an important, which is going to bring me on to Jennifer Aniston, the, the body will only gain or lose one pound of fat per week. You can't, that's not debatable, okay? So if we're losing more than one pound a week after the first couple of weeks, then we're unnecessarily over dieting and we need to put more food in because then we can increase the metabolic rate. The higher the metabolic rate is, the easier it is to lose weight and the more room we have to jump over flat plateaus, okay? So final point before we wrap up and go on to a Q&A. Like I said, I want to keep these lots of lectures as short as possible so it's not too much information at once. So how much does Jennifer Aniston weigh? Could anybody answer that question? 
unless you're some kind of Jennifer Aniston psycho stalker, I would imagine the answer to the question is no. But she looks phenomenal, okay? That's where your mindset needs to be, okay? You have a picture of the body you want, you have your dream goals, you have your vision, and that's where you're moving towards, okay? You don't look at Jennifer Aniston and go, oh my God, she's like nine stone two. You just look at her and you go, oh my God, she looks incredible. Um, and that's why I want you to get away from, from, from being obsessed with weight. Um, we'll come on to that at the end of this week in number four when we're coming in to measure your, measuring your progress. So that is the educational part over for today. And I just wanted to finish on that, um, that quote, um, just to, to be politically correct as well. So I, I rewrote the quote. If you give a man, woman, stroke, gender neutral, a fish, you can feed himself for a day, herself. Uh, teach a man to fish and you can feed him for a lifetime. So that's where we're going with this program. We're not looking for a super fast 12 week body transformation result, doing something that's not sustainable and that disrupts your life. Because what is the point? All you're going to do is finish at 12 weeks and go, Oh my God, thank God that's finished. Go back to eating normally, regain the weight and you'll be back on the internet looking for the next best plan or the next best coach. Okay. What we are doing is giving you the tools and the education to be able to manage both your nutrition and training and make smart decisions on it for the rest of your life, not just for 12 weeks. That means it has to be sustainable, it has to fit around family life, and it has to not disrupt your life, okay? So tomorrow's lecture is going to be on working out your macronutrient amounts protein carbs and fats and we will also discuss a little bit about alcohol why it's a macronutrient and why it's never spoken about so yeah i hope you enjoyed that i'm just i'm a bit of a zoom novice so i'm just going to stop my screen share and hopefully we can all jump on camera and i can open you up for any questions so i'm just gonna pull the chat up so yeah can see you all now which is good um so yeah has anyone got any questions that we you know we want to go through is there anything you're unsure on just yeah let me know whack a message in the chat um i can unmute you if anyone's feeling brave enough to to talk one's looking a bit tired we can all jump up and do a few squats if you want <laughs> cool okay so gathering everyone's pretty cool with that then okay so the the next lecture will be tomorrow at six o'clock we're going to do monday tuesday sunday monday tuesday wednesday each week for half an hour and a different topic so Thanks for tuning in. Great to see you all. And uh, I'll post the BMR link in the group and I'll catch up with you all real soon. See you later, guys.